Hi everyone, it's Daniel McCabe here at GI Energy again, and today we're talking about the pros and cons of all the major inverter brands for sale here in Australia today. Inverter number one, Fronius. So we've scored this out of 10 for five different categories as we have for all of the inverters in this video. So for Fronius, the performance, we've given it a nine out of 10. It's an Austrian made product. Typically things that come from Austria do perform really well. Secondly, the reliability, we've given it a nine out of 10 as well. Once again, being a European made product, we expect the reliability to be really, really good in the long term. We've been installing Fronius inverters for many, many years now, and they've always been very, very reliable for us. The failure rate is extremely low, and when there has been an issue, they've been looked after really well. Next on the list is cost. Now, because Fronius are a European inverter, they are quite a bit more expensive than some of the Chinese counterparts. That's why we've given them a seven out of 10 for cost. In terms of the design flexibility, once again, we've given them a seven out of 10. There's three main inverters with Fronius, the Primo, which is the small single phase, the Simo, which is a three phase inverter, and the Eco, which is the larger three phase inverter. The Primos and the Simos have really, really good design flexibility. So that means that you're able to play around with the string configuration a lot more. The Ecos, not so much, which is why we've given them a seven out of 10. Next on the list is monitoring. We've given them a nine out of 10 for the monitoring. If you look at the SolarWeb platform with Fronius, it is as good as it gets for a string inverter. It's very, very comprehensive. If you add a smart meter, which measures your household or business consumption, then it becomes a really, really comprehensive monitoring platform. So what that means is the overall score for Fronius out of 10 is 8.2. A couple of other things to consider in terms of the cons for a Fronius inverter. They are a little bit noisy. They're a fan cooled system, which means that when they work really hard, the fan is obviously spinning, which means that they can potentially make a little bit of noise. So you probably don't want to install one next to a living room or a bedroom area. For a full review of the Fronius range of inverters, head to our website. We'll put a link in the description. You can click on that and there's much more information about the products there. The next inverter on our list is Sungro. Once again, we've marked it out of 10 for five different categories. Category one being the performance, which we've given Sungro an eight out of 10. Not quite Fronius level, but the performance of the Sungro inverter has always been very, very good. Certainly for a Chinese brand inverter, they're the best Chinese brand inverter you can buy by a mile. Number two, reliability. We've also given them an eight out of 10. Sungro are now the world's largest inverter manufacturer. They supply more string inverters globally than anyone else in the world. And the reliability in the last few years has improved significantly. So much so that we very, very rarely have a single fault with a Sungro inverter. And we actually sell more Sungro inverters now than any other. Category three is cost. We've given them a nine out of 10. Being a Chinese product, they are a lot cheaper than the European counterparts. So a score of nine out of 10, we were close to giving them a 9.5, but a nine out of 10 is, is a very, very good score for cost. Next on the list is the design flexibility where we've given Sungro a seven out of 10. They have a really good range of inverters from very small single phase, all the way up to 110 kilowatt, three phase inverters for commercial applications. All of those inverters have multiple MPPTs and they're all pretty flexible. Not quite as much as the Fronius inverter, but still really good design flexibility. Which leads us on to our next category, the monitoring, which gets a 7.5 out of 10. Sungro monitoring is still very good. You can still have the smart meter to manage your consumption, but it's not quite as good as the SolarWeb platform. We find that the user friendliness of the platform is probably just not quite as good as SolarWeb. The way things are organized in the SolarWeb platform is a lot better for everyday consumers. All the information is still there with Sungro, but slightly just one notch down from Fronius. So what that means is overall, we've given Sungro a 7.9 out of 10. If you want a little bit more information about Sungro, there's reviews and more product information on our website. So if you head to the link below, we'll put a link in the comments to a review and to some other product information and technical data sheets for the Sungro range of inverters.
Okay, next on our list is Enphase, which are actually a microinverter. What that means is, as the name suggests, you have a small inverter on the back of every single panel instead of one string inverter that will incorporate the whole array. So basically with an Enphase microinverter, it works similar to a power optimizer, which we'll talk about in a moment with Solar Edge. Essentially every single panel on your roof is going to work completely independently. If you compare that to a string inverter, like most of the others on this list, you'll have your panels wired in string configuration for between 5 and 12 panels all connected together, which means that if one of those panels in that string is not working at its optimum level, it will bring the whole string down with it. With Enphase microinverters, if one panel is working at less than its best efficiency, it's only that panel that will be affected. So we have an article on our website, which we'll put a link in the description that you can click on, that explains the difference between microinverters, power optimizers, and string inverters a lot more comprehensively. So with Enphase, let's get to the scores. So for performance, because they're a microinverter, we've given them a nine out of 10 for performance. You're definitely gonna get good results with an Enphase inverter system, because every panel is gonna be fully optimized to work by itself. Number two, the reliability, we've given them an eight out of 10. With Enphase, they have proven to be a very reliable product. However, you have to consider the fact that with microinverters, you now have a small inverter on the back of every panel on the roof of your home or business, which means ultimately there are more points of potential failure within that system. We're not suggesting that they're all gonna go wrong overnight, they are a very good brand. However, by adding those panels onto your roof in the really hot Australian sunshine, there is more potential for failure there. So for the reliability, eight out of 10. Cost, this is where they really start coming unstuck. If you don't need to have microinverters on your roof, if you don't have a complicated roof design or you don't have lots of shade or potential debris on your panels, it might be difficult to justify the very high cost of Enphase, which is why we've given them a five out of 10 for cost. Next on the list is the design flexibility. Of course, because every panel is individual rather than string configuration, we've given them a 10 out of 10 for design flexibility. It doesn't get any better than this with Enphase for design flexibility. You can have panels dotted around all over the place if you wanted to, different angles, different orientations. It's not gonna make any difference to the performance of the overall system, which is extremely difficult to do with a string inverter. Finally, that brings us to monitoring. Once again, we've given them a 10 out of 10. The Enphase monitoring platform is extremely good. It's very user friendly and because every panel has its own inverter, you can zoom in on every single panel and look at the individual performance of every individual panel, which means if you're into that sort of thing and you're a bit techy, you can spend hours on their platform looking at how your system's performing, identifying how you can improve things. And if there are areas where shade is increasing on your panels from trees nearby, for example, you'll know right away when that shade is starting to encroach on your array again, and you can then go and trim your trees. So the monitoring platform, a 10 out of 10, it doesn't get much better than that. What that means is that overall, we've given them a score of 8.4 out of 10, which is a very, very good score. Enphase microinverters are great if you can justify the cost. One other side note with Enphase is that if you're installing a very large system for your home or really any commercial size system, it is very difficult to justify the cost because you have to have an inverter on the back of every single panel, whether you've got 10 panels or a thousand panels. So it does become, there's a cutoff point there where you would really um, use microinverters because that cost just gets bigger and bigger and bigger with the bigger systems. Next on the list is Solar Edge. So Solar Edge are a power optimizer system, which is very similar to a microinverter. We've obviously just been talking about Enphase. A microinverter will work by converting the energy on your roof from DC current that comes from a solar panel to AC current, which is what you use in your home. Power optimizer is different in the sense that every panel is still optimized individually, but you're still running DC current down to a centralized inverter where that conversion from DC to AC happens. So Solar Edge are a power optimizer, which means that they're very, very similar to a microinverter. Now to the scores, Solar Edge for performance, we've given them an eight out of 10. Very high performance. You've obviously got individually optimized panels. So if you've got a roof with lots of shade on, or again, if there's issues with potential debris, 
then they're a very good choice and they're gonna be a very high performance system. Second on the list, reliability. We've given them a seven out of 10. SolarEdge have been a very reliable product. However, as we mentioned with Enphase before, if you're installing lots of individual optimizers on your roof, there are gonna be more points of potential failure there. So for reliability, maybe not as reliable as a really good quality string inverter. Next on the list is cost, 6.5 out of 10 for cost. They're not quite as expensive as an Enphase system. However, as you can imagine, the added cost of the hardware on the roof, the added cost of the install to install the solar edge optimizers does mean that they're not as cost effective as a standard good quality string inverter. So six and a half out of 10 for cost. Next on the list, design flexibility, nine out of 10. You might be asking yourself, why does Enphase get 10, SodaRedge only get nine if they're a very similar system? They are very similar, they're not quite exactly the same though. So with SodaRedge, particularly for bigger systems, you do still have to be considerate of string configuration. With Enphase, that's not the case. That being said, for larger commercial projects, SodaRedge are usually the way to go still, because you can find more economies of scale, by using one optimizer for two panels, for example. So all of a sudden, if you've got a thousand panels on a roof, you're only purchasing 500 optimizers. If you were using Enphase, you'd be purchasing a thousand. So it makes a big, big difference in the overall cost, which is why Solar Edge are actually a really, really good choice for larger commercial projects that either want to have a high performance system with a difficult design on the roof, or they have lots of shade or debris. Next on the list, monitoring. Nine out of 10 for Solar Edge monitoring. Once again, you can zoom right in on the panels individually and have a look at how they're performing. In fact, if you have a look, we'll put a link down below in the comments. We've got a case study for two large commercial projects that have recently been installed, one at Padua College in Brisbane and one at the Whitsundays Airport in Proserpine where we've used Solar Edge inverters one is a 300 kilowatt system, one is a 400 kilowatt system, and there's some screenshots in there of the monitoring where you can see individual panel performance. The platform's very good, it's very user friendly, nine out of 10 for monitoring. The warranty is one last thing that I'd like to mention before going to the overall score. SolarEdge have a very comprehensive 12 year replacement warranty with their inverters, which is about as good as it gets for a standard warranty without paying to upgrade. Overall, that gives us a 7.9 out of 10 for SolarEdge. Next on the list is SMA. SMA have been around since the 1980s. They've always been a very, very good, solid brand here in Australia. Ever since we've been trading in 2011, SMAs have been an ever-present source of inverters for the Australian consumers. So, to the scorecards, for the performance of an SMA inverter, we've given them a seven out of 10. It should be noted here that SMA are a German company. However, the majority of the inverters are now outsourced to China. Now, while that's not necessarily a bad thing, what it has done is it's reduced the cost and it has also decreased the performance slightly, which is why perhaps if we go back five or so years, they might have a slightly higher score their performance, but for now, they're a seven out of 10. Next on the list, reliability. Even though they've outsourced to China, the reliability has still been very, very good. So they've got an eight out of 10 for reliability. Particularly if you're looking for an off-grid system, Sunny Boy or SMA, I should say, make a very, very good off-grid inverter, which has been around for a very, very long time and has proven to have been very, very reliable, called the Sunny Island. Next on the list is cost, where we've given them a seven out of 10. When SMA outsourced the manufacturing of their single phase inverters to China, it did bring the cost down fairly significantly. They are, for that reason, a bit cheaper than Fronius and, and, and some of the other inverters on this list. So we've given them a seven out of 10 for cost. In terms of the design flexibility, once again, we've given them a seven out of 10. They are a good inverter in terms of the number of MPPTs. The inverter range goes all the way to 110 kilowatts here in Australia. So the design flexibility is pretty good. Next on the list, monitoring, we've given them a six out of 10. The monitoring platform for con on the consumer level just isn't as good as SunGrow or definitely not as good as SolarWeb, obviously not comparable to the microinverters or optimizers that we've talked about here. So the platform is pretty basic. All the information is still there. You just have to look a little bit harder for it. And it's just simply just not as user friendly for consumers, which means overall SMA gets seven out of 10. 
For more information on SMA, we do have some reviews and some technical data sheets on our website. We'll put a link in the comments below. So click through for the review, click through the separate link to the other product information. Next on the list is FEMA. Now, bit of an interesting story with these guys. Back in 2009, when I first started out in this industry, they were known as a Power One Aurora inverter. More recently than that, they were purchased by a big company called ABB. And then more recently again, they were purchased by a company called FEMA. So there's been a few changes there in the company history. They have always been here in the Australian market, but that brand change has obviously caused a little bit of disruption over the years. So to the scorecard, the performance of what is now known as the FEMA inverter is a seven out of 10. Even though they've changed the company history, the, the company name over time and that history has changed, they have always been made and are still made in Europe, in Italy. So that is a very good selling point, of course, being a European product, usually the performance is, is that it's enhanced compared to inverters that are made in other places in the world. Second on the list, the reliability, seven out of 10 again. They're not the most reliable string inverter, but FEMA, being that European brand, still have a good score for reliability. Next on the list, cost, we've given them a seven again. So the cost of the FEMA range is somewhere between the Sungro inverter, which is the best of the Chinese brands, and the start of the European brands. So they're kind of sandwiched in between. So in fairness, for a European product, they're actually priced really, really well. Next on the list, the design flexibility, we've given them a seven out of 10. Pretty similar here, to be honest, to SMA and most other string inverters. They have a good range. Some of the commercial inverters are actually very, very good. The household and smaller three phase ones, pretty similar to SMA and other string inverters. So the design flexibility, we've given them a seven out of 10. Monitoring, a bit of a lower score here of six. Once again, all the information is there on their platform. It's just not as user friendly as brands like Fronius or Sungro. So you can dig around, you can do reports, you can find the data. It doesn't look as good on your screen, isn't as easy for the everyday consumer to use. And for that reason, we've given them a six out of 10. What that means is overall score out of 10 for FIMA is 6.8 out of 10. For more reviews, more information on FIMA, please click the links below. As always, we're gonna pop that in the comments. Click right through to see the review and there's other links in there so you can see data sheets and other info about the product. Okay, so those brands cover what we would consider to be the key players in the Australian marketplace. Since 2011, when GI Energy first opened, they're the brands that we've used more of than anything else. Different installs call for different inverters. So out of those, there may be one that's better suited to you and there may be one that's better suited to your neighbor or your best friend. It really depends on what you're looking for. Outside of those brands, there are of course other inverters available. Most notably, GrowWatt, Goodwe, Solace and Solax are the other really big ones and Huawei as well have recently entered the Australian marketplace and are gaining some market share. Honestly, among those, they're all Chinese brands and they're all very, very similar. They're all a very much lower price point. And from our experience and from the reviews that we've seen and the testing that we've done, the reliability among those is very similar and not as good as any of the others that we've mentioned there. So if you're looking for a budget system, you could probably turn to grow what good we, Solace, Solax or Huawei. But honestly, you're not gonna get a product that's as reliable or as high performing as the other ones that we've mentioned. If you'd like to know more, please do get in touch. As I've mentioned throughout this, there's information on nearly all of these products on our website. We've got a really friendly team here of CEC designers, engineers and consultants who can help you with any questions you have about any of these brands. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful and hopefully we can hear from you soon.